Thank you guys, really appreciate you taking the time to come and talk today. My name's Joe, I'm working today with Rock Media UK. Just, uh, Hello Joe. Yeah, nice to meet Hello. you. Nice to meet you. So, that, are those people out there that perhaps don't know a lot about you, describe yourselves. Right, okay. Yourselves <laughs> or the band? Oh, um, bit of bud. <laughs> three very good looking gentlemen. Absolutely. <laughs> Certainly. <laughs> no, um, so we're leader of Dale, um, and we um, originally formed with myself, and Wurzel from Motorhead and unfortunately Wurzel passed away we, we carried on and we finished the album that we'd started working on um, we were lucky enough to have Lenny as a guest Phil Campbell and people like that on our first record we've just released um, about six months ago our second album The Screw Tape Letters and we're really pleased to be here today we're, we're touring this year and we're looking forward to it brilliant to us, yeah. you up. Then we all as well. <laughs> <laughs> You've obviously played with some some really great names in in the industry. Are there people that you would love to play with if you you know you got the chance? Well, oh. yes. mm. Mm. Um, I mean, there always is, isn't there? And the list is sort of endless, isn't it? There's always people you'd like to. But for me personally, I, I've been a Motorhead fan since I was about nine years old. So to be friends with Motorhead and work with them, you know, I'd have cut my arm off as a sort of 12-year-old for that to happen. So I think, you know, most of the people you, you want to work with, they would say don't meet your heroes and things like that, but a lot of the people I've met are my heroes are sort of maybe their friends and things like that. I never regret meeting them. They've been just everything I wanted and everything I imagined. Obviously, you've got a lot of influences there. I know there are any but other people that, that you find are a great influence on, on the band. Well, I mean, I, I just start, and then you can tell me your thing. When, when we started, when me and Wurzel started, obviously, because he was in Motorhead, people always said, Who's going to sing? Is it going to be like a Lemmy sound alive type thing? Which obviously we weren't going to do because it would be ridiculous. Yeah. But we always wanted to um, sound a little bit more like, more like the, shall we say, more obviously catchy Motorhead songs. There was a lot of songs that Motorhead did that were very catchy, but because it was so heavy and Lemmy's style of singing, um, you, you didn't necessarily realise if it had been sung by Abba or something, the same song, everyone would thought, this is really catchy. Yeah. So initially it started off on, in that sort of vein, that was the idea. And then Matt's vocals have sort of taken it to a different place because he doesn't <laughs> sing like Lemmy. Um, Sort of more obviously melodic, yeah. um, and it's sort of developed from there, isn't it? Really, yeah. mm. there's more of a classic rock sort of feel. Mm. So, obviously, while we're here, the new wave of classic rock <laughs> still <laughs> festival. I think we'd be able to do any gigs or tour if I sang like Lemmy because <laughs> I wouldn't have a voice after the first gig. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah. I think, in general, rock okay. well, our, our music has some punk influence as well. Mm. The rhythm, like Motorhead did, like. Mm. Quite fast, yeah. energetic, like rhythmic wise, um, which fit my background a lot. Mm. That's what I used to play a lot growing up, and how, that's how I learned how to play the drums and the fits. Mm. I think that from a vocalist point of view, a, a lot of uh, my inspirations vocally are, are, are probably a little bit more mainstream than, than what we do. So it's you know, like Aerosmith, Bon Scott, that kind of, those sort of vocals. So it's, I, you know, I get to very, very thinly play with with that kind of thing um, in our music, um, but without jeopardizing how we want the music to sound, so, um, from my point of view. Yeah. That doesn't answer your question at all, does it, or does it? Yeah, I'm not, I was waffling on the way. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it, it, it can't be hard having that, that kind of shadow, that might be not the right word, but, but of Motorhead over you, finding your own path. Have you found that difficult or has it been quite easy to, to, to really move away from it? I don't know, I think with this new album, there's still lots of Wurzel's influences on there because we've been we yeah, a lot of songs so. together and stuff, but you sort of find your own feel and obviously we're not going to change drastically you know yeah, um but yeah i think this 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 new album that's out is um maybe a little bit more consistent throughout in terms of there's there's, there's a style because we had a hell of a lot of guests on the first one well, 
we've of course put all their own styles on. We've fell into a groove now in this second album. Like we've 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 kind of we've uh, the not the the first album obviously was uh, had so many different um, influences and people in in it uh, influences not musically but just the yeah. people in it. Whereas this, we've we've fallen into our groove where you know we're we're a band and. You know, yeah, we're all, yeah it's all, it's all yeah. kind of gone like that. Um, and yeah, it's, it's mm. fallen into yeah, completely planned all the way. Yeah, yeah absolutely. No, but yeah. you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Purposeful. No, we can edit that. Purposeful. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that's still, it's, it's, like, it does. You're yeah. right. I mean, it happens like that, doesn't it? You, yeah. you, you, you sort yeah. of get into a rhythm of certain things, and and um, we've been really pleased with it, and really pleased with the response. And, mm. Hopefully they all clap and go hooray tonight as well. Absolutely, I'm sure they will. <laughs> <laughs> so, from from your songs, what's your favourite lyric? Mm. I tell you, some of the things it's probably slightly different for me than, than these guys. Is some of the bits, some of the lyrics are little sort of in jokes I had with words which you wouldn't necessarily know unless I told you what they were because they don't appear like that. Yeah, yeah. It's not like, oh, I really miss you. Where are you, my friend, or something. Yeah. They're little more subtle things. And there's there's quite a lot of bits. And sometimes we've got a song called Paradise Turned Into Dust, which Lemmy sang the vocal. And that was the first song that me and Words will ever wrote together and played. And Words will always say, when we play that on stage, you know, we'd probably look at each other and start crying because it'd been such a big journey. But of course, he's not here, so I always go. I always look over a bit and go, you know, feel a bit choked up. Yeah. So there's probably more of an emotional thing with certain lyrics and bits and pieces like that. Um, yeah, you too. I'd have to say, if this is where you realise the man can't remember the words, <laughs> 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 needs the music to get to the end. Yeah, the um. It's, you're not wrong. Um, the uh, I, I was actually going to say paradise turn into dust, but I, from a from a, a the way that the, the the word construct works in that because it's it's very very motor heady, like from a lyrical point of, of view, um, and it's 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 not just chuck some words and, and see if it sticks. It's there's purpose behind every word, um, um, so I, I I just like the lyrics in. Obviously, I like the lyrics of all the songs, but the the lyrics behind Paradise Turn Into That Side, I really like. They're just really well constructed, and, and, and everything kind of just sits purpose. Chris Burke had said purposefully. I've got to say, yeah. <laughs> that's good. I've got well, a lovely word. Well, lovely. And Lemmy did the lyrics for that, that yeah. track, so that was really, you know, nice and amazing. When we recorded that with him in Hollywood, it was, you know, in it was about a year before he died. But I um, mean, he hadn't been well and everything, and um, you could see he put a lot of thought into it. And it was really quite emotional being with him when he did it for Wurzel, because Wurzel was one of his best friends as well, you know. And it was quite a magical thing. And I, I think probably he felt a little bit closure in doing some of the jobs he wanted to do, I think, before he passed away. Um, that's what I think. Yeah. Absolutely. What about you? Have you got a, a favourite lyric? Well, I think in the new album we have one song that I really, really like lyrically, um, which is Let Them Know Let Your, na know. your yeah. Name, um, which is, um, I think, it's, it's very. I don't know, it's very true, like, you know, don't worry about it, what you do, just do what you love and do your best, put your name out there and, you know, don't worry about what people say, you know, don't, don't listen to other people, just, you know, trust yourself and you're going to be fine. So it's very, I find it very inspiring and that's beautiful. I think the thing with lyrics as well is, often you talk writing for yourself. And I quite like doing a little wordplay things, which is a bit like lots of Lemmy used to do. And it's quite nice when no one has a clue what you're talking about. But then if you give them a hint or they, they sometimes maybe think it's about something else, but that's fine, because it almost means something different to different people. And, that, and that's the sort of way we've done stuff. So what's coming up in 2023 for you? Um, we're out on the road with Tank 
in March, and then we've got our own headline tour in April. Um, we're playing at Call of the Wide Wild Festival. Call of the Wide. <laughs> <laughs> That's a new one. Just down the road. <laughs> Call of the Wild. Call of the Wild Festival in May, which is great. A few more festivals, but some of them we're off out again on the road in, in the autumn and winter, and we're all being well going to the States for the first time playing with this group um, in March um, next year. Not slowing down then. <laughs> no. I don't think you no. can. I mean, it was such a nightmare with the COVID thing, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And you couldn't do stuff, and, and you know, with a lot of the festivals being backlogged almost with people from two or three years mm -hmm. before, um, we just want to play as yeah. many things as we yeah. can. And, we don't want to waste any more time. Yeah, you know, just, you yeah, do as much as we can. So we we were really really been looking forward to this show. Um, yeah, um, for a long time. Itching to and we played with the band on your show. Oh, Dave Nice yeah. Whiskey, great band. Yeah, we played with them at Eastern 1002 with Phil Campbell. It was. Oh, yeah. Yeah, in, yeah. Last year? Um, yeah, last year, yeah. Yeah, oh, fuck uh, yeah, that's uh, yeah, really great. That's good. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Uh, so just one last question then. Uh, so I've gone to a, a music studio. We've got a lot of young players up and coming there that, that love playing music and, and want to make as much of a career as they can out of it. Have you got any advice for them and for other young musicians like them? When I'm asked that question, I normally say, don't do it. And the reason I say that is because if they can get past someone saying, don't do it, then they might have the drive and passion to carry on. Because a lot of it is, obviously you've got to be good at your instrument, good at singing, you know, whatever, but a lot of it is the, 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 the sort of belief to keep going because there's a lot of failure, a lot of not failure, rejection and heartbreak and you've got to get strong for that and keep keep going and practice and enjoy you've got to have a thick skin. Sort of be true yeah, to yourself yeah, really. You were talking yeah. about that the other yeah, day. Yeah, weren't you? yeah, and I think as well find something that you really love and just follow it. As if you don't just follow any trend that happens at the, at the moment, just you know, find your style, yeah. your signature. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, whatever you love, yeah. do it. Don't listen to other people. Or just keep yeah. following this trend that you know come and goes. Create your style, and it would, would be timeless. Mm. That's, that's yeah, a lot of people I think do. They try to follow the latest trend, but of course, then you're behind it already because it's already. Yeah, there. exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that you like kind of on what you said. Just don't, don't give up. Yeah. It, 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 you have to be prepared to have knockbacks mm -hmm. and it's it's very important that you have a, a mindset that, that drives you forward and 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 almost just kind of go do you know what I did it mm -hmm. fuck you lot there's a, there's a lot of knockbacks so I set fire to myself yesterday <laughs> for example yeah <laughs> 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 and, I thought, <laughs> and I, th I think very importantly is is it regardless of how long it takes you mm. It can still happen. Don't think that you know. Oh, I'm, I'm it, because especially in in today's thing, you kind of have you, everybody has to be a pop star. Everybody has to. Everybody wants to be the next Miley. They want it quick. So, as yeah, well. yeah. They, you know, and and you. And Is that you, who you're signing yourself on? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> Miley Cyrus. Yeah. Um, but I think if you, if you just keep going. Yeah. Also do it because you, do it because you love it. You know, just don't think oh, I just want to be famous. Or anything. Yeah, yeah, just do it because don't. you love it, and then eventually, mm -hmm. if you're genuine, then things will come. If you're chasing the fame, you might as well just give up. Yeah, Why yeah. because fame is a byproduct of you yeah. achieving your success. Yeah. Um, well, one of the things Levy always used to say um, that you can't fail if you don't give up. Yeah. You just haven't got there. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's quite a true saying so, yeah, in all life, really. Yeah. He was a very wise man. Yeah. <laughs> and just have fun, you know, just, just do it for the fun as well. Like, you need to enjoy it, you know. If you, if you don't enjoy it, what's the point? I mean, that's the main thing, probably. The main okay, one quick flash question then. I've asked this to, to every band that does some more light-hearted interviews. So I've got to ask you, mm. bacon sandwiches, ketchup or brown sauce? <laughs> you can start, Dan. Dan being from Switzerland, this yeah. is an interesting yeah. European angle. <laughs> <laughs> Have both at the same time. Yeah, actually, sure, that's been quite a popular answer. I don't know if really? that's, people can't be decisive or they genuinely do like both on at the same time. I like so. both then. No, if I have to choose brown sauce, bro. Yeah. Can I throw a spanner in the works? Yeah. Of course. 
Has anybody tried vinegar on a bacon sandwich? No. no. Are you being serious? I am 100% serious. Game changer. Vinegar just on, on the bacon. bacon. Just, just on, on the bacon. bacon. On the bacon. Alright, I'm done. Mate, <laughs> I'm telling you, listen. Vinegar on a bacon sandwich is a complete game changer. It change, it's just, yeah, try it. Uh-huh. If, Do I'm, it. if I'm wrong, send me the, <laughs> send me the bill. <laughs> I, it sounds weird. Yeah, it does. It does, it sounds odd, but it works. Well, I'm well, not joking. Well, they've all been waiting for my answer. Because this is a big roll up, what I'm going to choose. You're just going to go to my Drum roll. Right, so. <laughs> <laughs> that is the right answer. There you go. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Though back to the, the bacon and vinegar thing. I, I grew up eating cheese and jam sandwiches, and most people think that's really weird, and it's not. Mm. <laughs> that's like the savoury and sweet. Yeah, absolutely. You'd have fruit with the ploughman's, wouldn't you? Where you'd have cheese. So. Yeah, yeah. Right. vinegar on bacon is just—I'm not joking. I'm going to get you guys to try it. It's banging. I'm going to try it's it. Very. Old. I need to. I need to see. Yeah, go and try. <laughs> yeah. It. It I will let you know. Real life changes, experience. It changes the taste. It's, I don't know I bet how, it but it's just yeah. weird. smoked or unsmoked bacon, though. Unsmoked. It does not matter. Unsmoked. unsmoked. Okay. I don't think it really matters. It just. I I don't really eat smoked bacon because I don't see the point in having something I can no longer taste. That is the little thing that all the viewers now can sleep safely yeah. in their beds, knowing that I don't eat they get smoked, smoked bacon. bacon. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here. You heard it here first. <laughs> that's it. That that's going to be the title, that's it. <laughs> Matt doesn't eat smoked bacon. <laughs> thank you guys. Thank really you appreciate you taking this time to talk to me. No, All the best. We're looking forward to seeing you tonight, and I will be there at Call of the Wide as well. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> looking forward to that one as well. Brilliant. Yeah, thank, no, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you.